Okay, now that we've had a chance to look at things like the feature templates in the edit toolbar, let's see these in practice and how they really work within the ArcGIS Pro environment. Okay, so now we're in ArcGIS Pro and we're going to start by reviewing feature templates and how they fit into the edit scheme, how they work and, and those kind of things. So uh, again, we're going to go up here to the edit tab in the ribbon and to access the feature templates, we need to click on the Create button here in the Features group. This is going to open the Create Features pane. And in here you'll see all of the available feature templates that we can currently use to create new features. It's important to remember that in order to create new features from scratch, you must have a feature template. And there are several reasons you might not see a feature template located over here in the Create Features pane. First is the layer may not be visible. So we uh, see that the power poles and the light poles both here are not visible and we don't see a feature template over here. So if we turn those on, we may see them. Now we don't, they did not come on and there are another or there are other reasons why that may be. The next reason is probably because they're not editable and you can see here I've gone to the list by editing button in the contents pane and you can see that both the light poles and the power poles are not editable. So if I click there, now they're listed as editable and you can see their associated feature templates have popped up over here in the Create Features pane. It's very important to note uh, what the state of the layers you wish to edit are. Are they visible? We can't create new features on layers that are not visible. And that just makes perfect sense. We don't want to be drawing new features and not be able to see them once we're done. And then they must be editable. So we must have them set as editing or editable as well as be in an editable data type being a shape file or geodatabase feature class. So now that we've got that set up, we can access the feature templates. And it's important to note that the feature templates are going to define all of the properties that we need to create a new feature. This includes the target layer. So you can see right now each feature template is broken down by the layer that it references. So if I create a new feature using, say, the sewer lines feature template, it's going to create a new sewer line feature, a new feature in that layer. If I go up and choose one of the templates under buildings, whether it's apartment, high rise, office, the new feature is going to be created on the building's layer. So that's the first property that the feature template is going to define for the new features we're going to create. And we can go in, um, select the feature template, and right click on it and go into properties. And we can see some other things that the feature template is going to help us define for the new features that we're creating. There are also general properties associated with the template itself. So first, we're going to have a name, right? So this is apartment. Uh, again, we can name it. This is tied back to what the, the label is for the symbol over here on the table of contents. I can fill in some basic metadata like the description and tags. You'll notice that the Create Features pane over here has a search function. So if we have a, a map that has multiple layers and multiple templates, sometimes it can be hard to locate the one we're looking for so we can search. And again, those tags are key words that we can use. We can then also control what drawing tools are allowed for creating new features in this uh, or using this template. So in this case, we're creating buildings. So we certainly want to be able to draw a polygon. Uh, we're in an urban area where we might actually have connected buildings, buildings that are directly adjacent to one another. So sure, autocomplete polygon makes sense. Buildings tend to have right angles. So yes, we want to allow that tool. Uh, some buildings can be circular, can have some sort of tower to attached to it or whatnot. So sure, we'll allow that tool. And certainly they can be just plain rectangles or squares, so we'll allow that. Uh, very few buildings are ellipsoidal in shape, so we're going to not allow that tool to be used. We've unchecked it, so users, when drawing a new building, cannot use an ellipse. Uh, we don't want buildings to be free-handed, meaning that as I move my mouse, it just draws. Uh, buildings tend to be more structured than that, so we don't want users to use that option. And we don't uh, want them to use the freehand autocomplete polygon tool for that very same reason. 
Now the building may be based off of another feature such as maybe the parcel itself. So sure will allow the use of the trace tool, create substructures. Again, this is for showing something that's based off something else. So uh, this is a new tool that was added fairly recently um, in there. And maybe we can do different polygons. Maybe we're cutting this building out of an existing one or something along that nature have been separated somehow. So sure will allow that, but we can control the tools that are allowed uh, users to use when creating a new, in this case, apartment building. And then I go to attributes. So what are default attribute values? If I know that um, buildings that are, are going in are existing or proposed, I go ahead and set these defaults up so they'll automatically be entered um, with that value. So in this case, you see the building type is automatically apartment. That's based on the symbology over here that's shown as the, the type, but we can set that for others. You'll also notice that over here on the Create Features pane, we've got a uh, cell to put in the number of floors, and that's because this box is checked. So users will be prompted to go ahead and enter that in before they start drawing. So I can do that for any of the fields that are available. So these are the properties that we can set up with the feature template. The nice thing with Pro is that those templates will change. If I go in and say for sewer lines that I want to change the symbology. So users aren't just entering in a, a generic sewer line, but I want them to go ahead and enter it uh, based on say the, the pipe material. What is the, uh, what is the pipe made of? So I've gone to symbology. I've set it to unique values. I'm going to pick the field called material. It adds in all of those. I'll go ahead and change my uh, color ramp there. Notice that it's updating the feature templates down here automatically. As I'm making the changes to the symbology, it's generating the feature templates. And that really helps to highlight the relationship between the contents pane and the feature templates, uh, that these two are, are really linked together. So, at this point, if I want to go ahead and start drawing a new feature, say a new building, um, and I'm just going to go zoom in to uh, an area, say a new building on this parcel, uh, for example, I can pick what it is, say it's going to be a high rise. Um, if I just want to make it a rectangle, I'm going to click the rectangle tool and you'll get an opportunity to use some more of these tools. Later on in the, the course, I'm just doing a quick demonstration here for you. So say the building starts here and then goes over to here and then is this long. And, you know, I would either have a set of plans or I would set the parcels to be transparent so I could see the underlying aerial photography. And there I've now put in that new building. Now, as I'm drawing these, as I select, say, for example, this office, so there's gonna be an office here. Notice when I do that, the edit toolbar comes on down here and it gives me tools for drawing different shapes and things of that nature. So right now I'm in the straight line. So if I use the polygon, so I'm drawing the straight line and then I go to here. Now to draw the next side, I can go down here and say it's at a right angle. So it's going, that's gonna lock it as a, a um, perpendicular line to the last line I've drawn. So I can come down to here and then that would continue to persist as I draw that. If I need to do other options, you can see there's drop down so I can do a, a distance distance tool. I can have it intersect with other existing features, um, snap to or go to the midpoint of another feature. I can also get into draw curves, which we'll be talking about later. Uh, as well in, in this course. So various curve tools to draw those. And then here's things like the trace tool or um, streaming tool, which is kind of a freehand function. So tracing other existing features is all here. So we can get in and look at that. So I'm gonna go back up here with my, uh, keep my line tool, but that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that sketch and hit F2. And there is my new office building. So I've gotten that drawn. I've used some of the tools from my edit toolbar down here. And now I'm ready, since I've drawn these, to begin updating the attributes. And there's a couple ways I can, can do that. 
Uh, with this selected, I go back to my Edit tab and click the Attribute buttons up here in the Selection group on the Edit tab. And that's going to open the Attributes pane. So from here, I can come in and say, oh, well, the number of floors of this office building is uh, two. Uh, so it's two floors. The estimated height on there is, say, I don't know, 24 feet, right? And the building status is this is a proposed. We'll go ahead and make it that's a proposed building. It hasn't been built yet. It's just proposed. But we're going ahead and setting up. And I can apply that. So now I've updated the information for that. That's one way to, to do it. I can also, I'm going to close this pane for just a second, uh, go in. I'll select the building we drew over here. And then open the attribute table itself. So I can go through the attribute table here and set it to show just the selected feature there. And I can begin entering this in. So this was a high rise based on the symbology. So we'll say high rise. We'll say it is uh, six stories. And the estimated height on that would be, I don't know, we'll say uh, 72 feet in there. And so I'm actually in the table updating the attributes directly in the attribute table. So you can either use the attribute pane or the table to update the attribute information for the features that you're working with. I'm go ahead and clear that selection. Now you'll notice that when I was editing in the table itself, I didn't have to apply the update. Unlike the attributes pane, I had to apply that. So one thing we can do, I'm going to close the table really quick, is go in and make changes to multiple features. So I'm going to go in really quickly, set the buildings uh, as my only selectable layer for the sake of simplicity, and say that all of the these buildings right here, I've got three selected, say I need to update the attributes for all three of those. So I'm going to, I'm going to change the status. So I'm going to go up here to buildings, up here, so I've selected the layer name up here. And I'm going to go down and I want to change all of these from whatever they are to unknown. And I apply that. So now when I go look at each individual one, you can see it's listed as the status of unknown. So through the attribute pane, we can edit um, the values of multiple features with a single edit. So that makes it's a pretty powerful way of, of updating attribute information quickly for multiple features. You can do similar things in the attribute table. Uh, again, with those three selected, I'm going to open the attribute table as well. And then show just my selected features. Now, if I right click, so we're going to change the building status here again. If I right click on it, I got this menu. So I can use calculate uh, field. So with the calculate field tool open, now that it's open, um, you can see the input table is automatically set to buildings because that's what we're, we have open. The field we right clicked on was building status, so it populated that. And now I can build an expression. And again, you can use Arcade, Python 3, or SQL. Uh, to write these expressions. I'm going to do something very simple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in a value whoops, uh, of existing. Well, it's a, a text value, which is why I have it in quotes. I'm going to validate that. It says it is valid, and I can now run it. And you can see it auto-updated all three of those when I ran that expression. Now, one thing to not be confused about is the fact that that doesn't suddenly apply a any sort of equation or expression to that field. So any new buildings I add or ex existing ones I change, that it will change update to that value. It doesn't do. This is a one-time shot uh, when you do that, but it is a very powerful tool. You'll also notice when I right click that there is um, a calculate geometry 
tool. This will allow you to calculate various spatial properties uh, associated with it. If you've got, um, you know, you want to calculate the area, the perimeter, the, you know, number of vertices, the centroid of, of the feature or whatnot. You can go ahead and calculate those into that field as well using the Calculate Attributes tool. And again, uh, when doing it from the table here, it's going to calculate all of those for the various selected features. So there's a quick review of feature templates, how they work, how they get created, uh, as well as how to edit attributes. So I hope you found that very helpful uh, and gave a better understanding of the concepts we talked about in the, the lecture. Uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Thank you.